Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Airbus Perlin Mission 2 kicks off second season. DJI refines first-person VR goggles. California pilot sentenced to federal prison. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's April 28th and this is Airborne Unlimited. Airbus Perlin Mission 2, an initiative to fly a glider to the edge of space to collect insights on high-altitude flight, weather, and climate change, returned to flight this week. Pilots Jim Payne and Miguel Itermendi achieved its highest altitude to date, reaching 30,615 feet. Perlin 2 will spend spring soaring in mountain wave conditions in the skies above Sierra Nevada before deploying in May to Argentina. Ed Warnock, CEO of Perlin Project, said, quote, This past year, our team gained invaluable insight and experience from flying the glider in and around the Andes Mountains. To reach the altitudes that will enable the aircraft to conduct its unique research, the team is searching for elusive stratospheric mountain waves, which only occur a few places on Earth and for a few weeks out of the year. We're thrilled that the Perlin 2 glider is back in the air for another season of exploration, because this endeavor inspires us all to expand the limits of our thinking, said Alan McArthur, chairman of Airbus Americas. The Perlin Project's all-volunteer team has updated the experimental Perlin 2 glider, which features a pressurized cockpit, enhanced avionics, and life support systems. Drone maker DJI has released more details about its soon-to-be-available first-person VR goggles, which have been in development for a year or so. Engadget reports that the DJI goggles place a pair of 1920x1080 screens in front of the wearer's eyes, providing an immersive experience for the user. The goggles display what the drone's camera sees, so it's a bit like you're actually flying on the aircraft. And Gadget compares the experience like looking at a 216-inch home theater screen sitting about 9 feet back from the display. The DJI goggles are compatible with Mavic Pro or Phantom 4 drones, and head movements can be used to control aircraft yaw and camera tilt. Up to two sets of goggles can be connected to a single drone, so you can share the experience with a friend. The DJI goggles are expected to retail for $449 and should start shipping May 20th. After the break, the pilot that wasn't. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-by at aero-news.net. An Irvine, California man who admitted that he illegally piloted private jets with passengers on board without having a valid pilot's license has been sentenced to 10 months in the federal prison. Arnold Gerard Leto III, 37, was sentenced by United States District Judge Del S. Fisher, who also ordered the defendant to pay a $5,500 fine. Leto pleaded guilty in October to two counts of operating an aircraft without a valid airman certificate. Court documents note that Leto operated aircraft with passengers on a number of occasions without the proper authorization from the FAA. In January 2015, Leto piloted a Cessna Citation with paying passengers from Santa Monica to Phoenix prior to receiving any type of airman certificate for turbojet-powered aircraft. The following month, Leto obtained an airman certificate that authorized him to be a second-in-command pilot on a Cessna Citation, but he continued to operate the Citation as a sole pilot with passengers. Furthermore, on April 8, 2016, Leto was the sole pilot of a Falcon 10, with passengers on board that flew from Van Nuys to Las Vegas, Nevada. At this time, Leto was not certified to fly the Falcon 10, and the FAA had revoked all of his airman certificates. It's Friday, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. 
One of ANN boss Jim Campbell's standard stump speeches starts with the line, the worst enemy of the aviation world is the phrase, well that's the way we've always done it. Now Jim believes it's time to bet the ranch and get really innovative, in a disruptive kind of way. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Lauren. Hi, folks. Uh, let me get off the standard path of politics for a little bit and talk about something a little bit closer to home here. Um, I give this stump speech on a regular basis when I'm asked to give uh, talks here and there. And it starts with the greatest enemy of aviation is the phrase, well, that's the way we've always done it. You've heard me use this time and time again. And the fact of the matter is, is I'm finding more and more that it's become more dangerous by the day. As aviation continues to wind its way toward obsolescence, people are absolutely entrenched in the idea that things can be better again simply by going back to old strategies. But we're in a new world. We're an aggressively different, innovative world, a disruptive world. I've been preaching this for a long time, and yet we bit the bullet a little bit over 20 years ago, 21, 22 years, whatever it is, and started Aero News as the first 24-7, 365 aviation news service, and then first to podcast and first to video, and then Airborne and a whole bunch of other things, and live this and live that. And the fact of the matter is we've been looking at this and doing things the way we've kind of always done them for the last 20 years and realized that it was time to disrupt ourselves. I have been engaged in conversations over the last year or two with really passionate, really interesting, really exciting people who believe in the future of aviation, even though they're not quite sure what it is, like all of us. They believe that aviation can have a good future, that aviation is of value to the world, that either for recreational or professional reasons, that it not only has an extraordinary value, but that value can be increased and that our future can be a good one. But realizing that the world around us is changing, realizing that everything that we knew a few years ago is different now as a function of a very disruptive world, and knowing that ultimately for aviation to survive, it must change. Aviation can have a bright future, Aviation can be a huge part of everyone's future if it is willing to innovate, if it is willing to disrupt, if it is willing to change with the times. And so must we. It's funny, I came to this crossroads not so long ago when I was offered a pretty good sized bucket of money for this place. And for a moment, it was tempting. I've got a good life. Um, I have a marvelous marriage and lovely people around me and good friends and there's a thought that it would be fun to get out and go crazy and not have to worry about every little detail every second of the day but the fact of the matter is this i am just as passionately involved in working for the future of aviation as i am anything else in my life and thankfully my wife supports this to an unrestricted degree and realizes that i'm no fun unless i'm out evangelizing so here it is. We're not going to tell you what we're doing yet, uh, but we're well along the way. Just call it ACN for now. But Aero News is about to change radically. Aviation media is about to change disruptively. And everything that we know how to do is being poured into how to do it differently, do it better, be more innovative, ride the leading, bleeding edge of everything, and make sure that no matter what happens, we're never looking back. We're looking forward. More info to follow, some pretty exciting stuff, hopefully announcements at Oshkosh. I promise, this is the most disruptive and innovative we know how to be, and you ain't seen nothing yet. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, just being as disruptive as I can possibly be. After these messages, Air Canada tries out biofuel. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. 
Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Air Canada has announced its participation in the Civil Aviation Alternate Fuel Contrail and Emissions Research Project, a research project testing the environmental benefits of biofuel use on contrails. During these flights, the National Research Council of Canada will trail the Air Canada aircraft with a modified T-33 research jet to sample and test the contrail biofuel emissions. Corus Aviation Inc. will acquire six ATR-72600 aircraft with attached leases from Aviation PLC. Three of these aircraft are currently on lease to UK carrier Flybe and three to Virgin Australia Airlines. The aircraft are between one and four years old and are the first ATRs added to Corus Aviation Capital's regional aircraft fleet. SES has announced that GOGO has signed a new capacity deal to enhance in-flight connectivity services on key air travel routes over North America and the Pacific Ocean. GOGO has leased all available capacity on SES's AMC-4 satellite, which SES will move to a new orbit to serve flights to, from, and within states of Alaska and Hawaii, flights along the west coast of the U.S., and flights over the Pacific Ocean. Drones are creating more content than ever before, and with the announcement of the Seagate DJI FlyDrive, managing the surge of data is about to get easier. FlyDrive will allow drone pilots to efficiently back up their photo and video content on location, thanks to its large storage capacity, integrated micro SD card slot, quick transfer speeds, and durable build. L3 Aviation Products has received TSO authorization and an AML STC for its EFI 650 cockpit display, a new integrative active matrix liquid crystal display designed for regional and legacy corporate aircraft as part of an alliance with Thomas Global Systems. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The aviation version of Whack-A-Mole continues with the attorney who is representing Dr. David Dow, the passenger who was physically removed from a United Airlines flight earlier this month, taking on another client. Attorney Thomas Demetrio has disclosed that he will be representing a woman who got into an argument with an American Airlines flight attendant over a baby stroller in the cabin. A video posted on Facebook Friday that has gone viral shows a flight attendant on American Airlines Flight 591 from San Francisco to Dallas forcefully took the stroller from the woman, hitting her and nearly hitting her child. The actual altercation did not appear on the video clip. Her case is compelling, Demetrio said. American Airlines said through a spokesperson that the carrier has been in contact with the woman. Demetrio said the woman reached out to him to seek representation. The flight attendant was suspended and apologized to the woman and her family. The airline said that it is investigating the altercation. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.